Hi, my name is Will Manger. I'm a managing consultant for the Center for Transportation and the Environment here at our headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. The Center for Transportation and the Environment, or CTE, is a member-supported nonprofit whose mission is to improve the efficiency and sustainability of the United States energy and transportation systems. CTE is currently providing technical assistance to over 50 transit agencies across the country. The vehicles deployed under these projects represent approximately one-third of the battery electric bus market and over 60% of the fuel cell bus market. The purpose of this video is to provide a report on the battery electric bus deployment at Lexstrand in Lexington, Kentucky. We will use this report to not only update FTA on the project, but to also share our experiences with transit agencies across the country that are looking to deploy zero emission buses. The early stages of this project really started when diesel went through the roof. Diesel was uh, is a big piece of our budget, one of the largest pieces of our budget, and we're looking at ways to manage that increased cost. We also had a fleet that was aging very rapidly. Many of our buses were reaching their useful life. So we were really looking at ways to manage our cost of our energy sources in a more stable way. So fuel diversification strategy was one of the things that really pushed us to look towards electric vehicles. Lextran uh, applied for a low-no grant under 5312. It was a MAP21 program uh, back in 2013-2014. Uh, for um, five battery electric buses plus the charging equipment. We saw an opportunity to acquire buses with uh, a mix of federal dollars and a small amount of local dollars, which is exactly what we had, and uh, we, we took the chance and we went with it. My name is Meredith Linscott. I am a senior engineering consultant with CTE, and I helped in the initial proposal development and project implementation at Lextran. The LONO program is offered by the FTA to help pay the difference between your incumbent diesel bus or diesel hybrid bus and the electric buses that are considered for deployment. The program's very competitive and CTE helps agencies develop a comprehensive plan for deployment, helps them through the proposal writing process, and provides start to finish project management for these agencies and help them through their deployment. Having a solid plan for deployment is critical to project success. Getting key stakeholders involved from the beginning to include the general managers, the facility managers, the maintenance technicians, the dispatchers, the drivers, the utilities is critical to a successful deployment. So at the time, the opportunity came up to incorporate the electric vehicles into our fleet. You know, there, there was some reluctance um, on, on the part of, of people who'd, who'd been here a long time. No one here had had any experience with an electric bus. The, the fast charge buses that we have operate differently than a diesel bus or even a hybrid electric bus. So a diesel bus, you fill up the tank, it runs and runs and runs. The electric buses, the fast charge electric buses, uh, need to be charged every so often. So you look at a route, how long it is, where it's operating, and then see how long that charge is going to take to keep the bus at a full at a full charge or at a healthy charge so it doesn't run out of electricity. So it's sort of the equivalent of keeping your cell phone charged during the day rather than letting it go down all overnight. Well, I think one of the biggest things we had to do to prepare uh, for the use of electric buses was uh, build a schedule that is um, that has charge time built in. One of the challenges with Lextrans electric bus deployment project was their hub and spoke route system. So every bus comes into the station around the same time and tries to leave the station at the same time. With deployment of five electric buses that made utilizing one charger a challenge and CTE worked closely with Lextran from the beginning to determine what routes could utilize the electric bus, how they might share a charger and minimize impact to their route strategy. It was very helpful for CTE to be able to help us model the route. So to know based on the topography, the hills, or the you know the travel pattern of that particular route, to know the schedule timing, to know which routes made sense to try the buses on first. So routes that some routes were better than others, some routes were long, some routes were short. So the, the route modeling was very helpful. It also helped to have 
another source of information that wasn't just coming from the vehicle manufacturers. Uh, you know, whether it's Proterra, whether it's one of the other vehicle manufacturers, they have lots of data and lots of information about this is zero emissions that, or this is going to save you that much, you know, money on fuel cost. But to have another source that was able to do that and kind of had an industry approach or an energy sector approach was also very helpful. For these projects, CTE works with the OEM, Proterra in this case, to provide training to Lextrand drivers and mechanics. What we typically notice in these deployments is once the drivers and mechanics are trained and have an opportunity to get comfortable with the vehicles, they actually prefer them to the conventional uh, diesel and CNG vehicles, uh, mainly due to the smooth ride and uh, the quiet nature of these vehicles. The, the training that, that folks received, a lot of it was in the operations department with the operators that would be driving them. Um, and folks in the maintenance department, obviously, who would be maintaining the vehicles. Well, we got lucky and Proterra has a, a trainer on site for a year. So I had him shadow him along with classroom training that was ongoing for a year. Uh, we did safety training, component training, uh, lockout, tagout training. The training in new technology, they were scared at first. I wouldn't say it's been more difficult. I'd say the training is different, but now they're getting comfortable with it. High voltage training in an electric bus, in my opinion, is the future, and all the transit companies are going to go to it. Okay, compared to one of our regular buses, it's a little bit longer, a little bit wider, but it drives very well. It handles very well, and it's very quiet as you drive. You can hardly hear the engine run. Um, it has a lot of good points, a lot of potential. Um, I would like to see it on much more routes than we use them on. My passengers, the only thing that they don't like too much about the bus is the seats are a little cold and hard. But other than that, they like the bus because it's not so noisy. It's, it's smooth riding, uh, lots of windows to look out of, and uh, they just wish it had Wi-Fi. So this is as loud as it gets, huh? This is about as loud as the engine gets. <laughs> That's it, what you hear. Well, I drive one of these every day, so to me, it's been a, a great deal because it's a good running bus, it's quiet, um, it's a little bit bigger, you can get more people in there, and I enjoy driving it, you know, uh, there's just a few little improvements that would be good, basically. I mean, if I didn't like the bus, I would have changed routes, and I'm not about to change. We've also found that when transit agencies engage their local community, it really helps to build support for the battery electric bus fleet. One of the great things about the, uh, these electric buses is that they're sort of future-proof in the sense that as the grid gets progressively cleaner here in Kentucky and nationwide, the amount of pollution produced, both greenhouse gas emissions, particulate matter, anything else necessary to power them will go down, whereas with a diesel bus, as the engine ages, we'll see even more pollution. Uh, we use uh, an avail uh, program, our system uh, for data collection, which uh, has trigger boxes and the trigger box at the transit center, it has a direction of entry. So uh, routes that would come in from another direction and would go through that trigger box to get back around to the charger uh, would show an early bus uh, because it would go into the trigger box and out of the trigger box uh, signaling that it had, it had already left. So just trying to get um, routes set up so that they approach the transit center from the right direction. Most of our routes go into one central hub uh, downtown at our transit center. So that made it a very convenient place to locate the charger, but that did mean that the buses had to, we had to stagger the buses so that we could use different buses during the same time period. You know, if we if we have five buses, they can't all be charging at the same time. We only have the one charger. We've had to make some alterations, uh, trying to find that those extra few minutes uh, to give to charge. But for the most part, uh, what we have set up 
works. It works better on some routes than other routes, uh, routes that have a little more time uh, traditionally in them. Had it not been for CTE helping us do some of that modeling, um, we would probably be in um, a trial and error situation every day because we didn't, didn't have and don't have a very large staff with the resources to be able to do that. We think this video is an important tool to share key lessons learned from early electric bus deployments with the transit community. One of the early problems at Lextran was parking the buses outside overnight in extremely cold weather. While Kentucky is not typically considered a cold weather environment, they did have some unusually cold nights last winter. The buses required extra time before pullout to warm the batteries, and we did not count on this extra time in the scheduling. As a result, there were some mornings when Lextran opted to forego use of their battery electric buses in favor of their diesel counterparts. Of course, the solution to this problem is either to park the buses inside in cold climates or to keep each bus plugged in overnight so they can keep the batteries warm if that option is available. Cartera buses are built with a composite body, which provides advantages like a reduced weight. But in late 2018, Lextran experienced some cracks in the wheel wells and had to send the buses back to Greenville for repair. So cracks were discovered in the wheel wells of the Lextran buses during a routine inspection. So within the first day after discovering the issue, we dispatched experts to Lextran to address the situation and further assess any defects in the body. Unlike metal parts, once you repair a composite, you can have a bond that's as strong or stronger than the original manufactured piece or part. Whereas if metal yields, it can never be made as strong as it once was. Composites are very different. A proper repair of a composite can be even stronger than the original part. So we, we rely on vendors who are experts in the industry of composite repair to make the repairs. So we quickly uh, dispatched a team from a known industry expert and that takes a little time for mobilization. It takes about two to three weeks to repair the bodies. For customers, this is a new technology to them. Our customers are used to traditional metal fabricated parts. So composite bodies are a new technology for our customers. And part of our job in customer service is to walk customers through understanding and getting comfortable and familiar with new technologies. One challenge of being an early adopter and, and one thing that I would let other people know is that you know the electric bus is great. One thing that is important to know is that this vehicle is not simply a drop-in replacement for a traditional 40-foot diesel bus. You can't get one, can't get the electric bus one day and put it out in service the next. You're going to need to do a little bit of route analysis, modeling, um, trial runs to see how that goes. Um, it will take some time you can make it work. If I was to tell other service managers and maintenance directors what to do in preparation for the electric bus, I would probably say hire a consultant. Someone that's done it before uh, and plan ahead. Make your mechanics comfortable with a lot of training. The advice I would want to give to transit agencies who are looking at getting into electric buses, specifically with the charging equipment, is Start early and often with your utility company and the local governments. You, you may have the benefit of this won't be the first time that they've done it, but if it is the first time, they are gonna have questions that you're not necessarily gonna know the answer to because they're, they're looking at it from a completely different angle or aspect. I didn't know very much about electricity. Oh, I, I didn't do great in my physics class in high school, so I was, felt like I was learning a lot. So they're gonna have questions that maybe you're gonna need support from other people and start that conversation as early as you can. The, the other piece of advice is, is understand the site conditions and understand how you want the bus to operate. Uh, is it fast charge? How's that? Where's that going to be on the route? Is it at the end of the line? Is it at the start of the line? Is it in the middle? All those things will feed into how you can operationalize the buses.
I, I guess if going back, I also am just grateful that we had other people to support us, whether it was other transit agencies or whether it was the support from Proterra or, you know, FTA being involved in this project with putting the Lono grant out there and having other agencies go through it at the at the same time or close to the same time. Uh, we're grateful for that. You know, projects like this just exemplify uh, how. Um, transit entities can um, um, become uh, a leader in their communities uh, by providing sustainable transportation solutions uh, that reduce uh, both emissions, uh, improve air quality, and um, uh, create a, a cleaner environment. Why this was such a good opportunity for us and, and why we were able to um, round that corner of, you know, you're skeptical, you're reluctant, but here's how we're going to bring you along, um, comes down to dollars and cents, really. Um, we were able to purchase these buses at a much lower rate, simply thanks to the LONO program and the FTA funding that we received. We didn't have that opportunity otherwise, and that would have been a cash outlay um, of, our, of our local dollars. And, you know, when you talk about service on the street or people that don't have a way to get to school, to get to work, to get to the doctor. Um, it could be, you know, the person who served you in a restaurant, the person who uh, takes your blood at the hospital. All of those people, we serve them every day. And if we hadn't received the electric vehicles when we did, I'm not sure what we would have done. In support of LexTran's battery electric bus deployment, CTE provides key performance indicator or KPI reporting during the first year or two that the buses are in service. These reports can provide a wide variety of information depending on the information that the transit agencies want to see. CTE is often called to present these reports during transit agency board meetings so that board members and directors can hear from an independent third party on how well the buses are performing. CTE feels that the following KPIs provide a concise summary of Lextrans battery electric bus performance to date. As of June 30th, 2018, we have completed 18 months of the 24-month data collection and reporting period. During that time, the five Proterra FC buses have traveled approximately 170,000 miles with an overall grid efficiency of 2.6 kilowatt hours per mile. The intent of the project was to replace aging diesel buses with battery electric buses. By removing five diesel buses from service, CT estimated that Lextran would be able to reduce their diesel fleet miles by at least 150,000 miles or 10%. As you can see, Lextran reported approximately 200,000 less diesel miles in 2017 compared to 2016. FTA and NREL report that a target of 3,000 miles per bus per month is a general expectation for transit agencies. While Lextran's battery electric bus fleet falls short of this target, it is important to note that their conventional fleet seldom meets this target based on their service territory and route structure. Also, average monthly mileage per vehicle for the battery electric bus fleet is comparable to Lextran's conventional fleet during months where battery electric bus utilization was the highest. We mentioned earlier that the overall grid efficiency of Lextran's battery electric fleet is approximately 2.6 kilowatt hours per mile. When reporting efficiency, CT feels that it is important to show calculations for both the vehicle efficiency and grid efficiency, since a vehicle efficiency does not account for losses experienced at the on-route charger. For comparative analyses between fleet fuel types, CTU focuses on the grid efficiency calculation since it is the basis for Lextran's total fuel costs. The efficiency of the battery electric bus fleet shown here in miles per gallon diesel equivalent is highly dependent on ambient temperature. As you can see, efficiency is typically lower in the coldest and warmest months due to HVAC use. In extreme temperature conditions, HVAC can be the largest power draw on board a battery electric bus. It is important to note that even the lowest efficiency reported to date, 11.69 miles per gallon diesel equivalent in December, is still roughly three times more efficient than a conventional diesel bus. On average, Lextran's battery electric bus fleet is four times more efficient than their diesel and CNG fleets, three times more efficient than their diesel hybrid fleet, and 2.3 times more efficient than their gasoline fleet. It is important to note that their gasoline fleet is made up of smaller shuttle buses. 
Flextran's total battery electric bus fuel cost is dominated by demand charges at the on-route charger, as seen here in red. Lextran spends approximately $7,000 a month to fuel the 5-bus fleet. Despite the higher efficiency of the battery electric fleet, the utility rates available to Lextran translate to a fuel cost per mile that is approximately 14 cents higher than their diesel fleet on average. However, the battery electric bus fleet fuel cost per mile is comparable to Lextran's diesel and CNG fleets during months with high utilization. Because the demand costs are high and the energy costs are low, we expect that Lextran's average fuel cost per mile for their electric fleet will continue to decrease with more buses deployed and more miles driven. Continuing with this theme, this chart clearly shows that as utilization increases, cost per mile decreases. It is highly important for Lextran to optimize utilization of the battery electric buses in order to spread the demand charge across as many miles as possible and keep fuel costs at a minimum. By operating battery electric buses instead of diesel buses over an 18-month period, Lextran has prevented over 1.1 million pounds of greenhouse gases from being emitted into Earth's atmosphere. Lextran's reduction in diesel fuel consumption has also reduced local criteria pollutants that contribute to air quality issues, alleviating the negative health impacts that burning conventional fuels have on the Lexington community. To put this into perspective, 1.1 million pounds is equivalent to the weight of 42 Proterra Catalyst FC buses. This amount of greenhouse gas is also equivalent to the carbon that is removed from the air by approximately 13,000 trees planted and grown for 10 years. This video report is disseminated under the sponsorship of the United States Department of Transportation Federal Transit Administration in the interest of information exchange. The United States government assumes no liability for the contents or use thereof. The United States government does not endorse products or manufacturers. Any trade or manufacturer's names appear herein solely because they are considered essential to the contents of the report.